the doctors, the need for social distancing is overblown. So we are checking back with him this morning. He is joining us via Zoom. Dr. Erickson, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So bring us up to speed. It's, it's, it's been a few weeks now since uh, you came out with this uh, information on data that you compiled based on the research that you did. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of con controversy surrounding the information and some in the medical industry and, and profession are saying, you guys are reckless by coming out with this information and talking about this. What's your response and where are things now for you? Well, uh, re reckless isn't the word I would use as Nobel Prize winners, Scott Atlas and multiple MD PhDs around the country, hundreds in fact, are coming to the same conclusion, which is COVID-19 is widespread. The US, uh, the studies in California, LA County and Stanford both showed about a 4% rate in the community, which is about 50 times what their, their public health department had reported. So what does this mean? That means it's much, much, much more widespread than we thought. And so do we need to, to track, trace, and isolate? No. Do we need to pass HR 6666? No. So I think our, our elected leaders at this point need to listen to the people and say, you know, we the people uh, want to go about our lives. We understand the death rate in California. It's 2694 today. We understand that. We understand that the hospitals have low census. We understand that people know how to social distance and protect the elderly and the immune compromised. And what I'm hearing from we the people is, if these elected officials won't listen to the way that we want to govern our community, they need to be replaced. Have you contacted or been in contact with the White House uh, task force on this? Have you spoken with uh, anyone from Washington, D.C., President Trump, perhaps? I, I would love to. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with my elected officials in the state of California and helping them understand the science, but also understand what I've talked to a lot of people about this. And a lot of physicians and scientists agree that it is it is appropriate to start opening up the country, mm -hmm. opening up our schools and continuing this lockdown when the collateral damage is becoming so significant is not appropriate. And this is this is from ER doctors in the Bronx, Dr. Daniel Murphy who uh, put an article out last, last week that said he's had COVID. He said, I, I've dealt with this for you know the last two months. The hospital is lightening up. And in his opinion now, the collateral damage for the people of New York is worse than the virus itself. This is per Daniel Murphy, ER doctor in the Bronx. Why is it then, Dr. Erickson, um, that you have the American College of Emergency Medicine, the American College of Emergency Physicians and others uh, going against the what you're saying. What you, these are, going these against are the academic data. institutions. These are not people that I, I see patients every day. I've done 7,000 tests. You need to talk to the people that are seeing patients every day. We're on the ground. We know what's happening. Academic institutions that, that sit in their offices and fire off emails is not who we need to be listening to at this time. The PhDs, the epidemiologists I talked to, uh, Dr. Witowski, Dr. Gisek, epidemiologists from different countries, say that it's time to open up in a stepwise fashion. These are the people we need to listen to. These are the people that have solutions. People that want to keep us in a perpetual lockdown and crush a $20 trillion economy when there is not a medical need for it, these are not the people we should be listening to. And to recap, um, for those who are just kind of tuning in and uh, learning about the data that you guys have come up with, um, you tested what, this is based on what, 5,000 patients with COVID-19 that well, you let's, looked let's, at? Let's talk about Stanford. Stanford study has 3,300. They checked for uh, antibody. They found that between 2.6 and 4% of the population in Santa Clara County indeed uh, had antibodies to COVID. What does that mean? Their public health department reported 956. However, they're saying it's 50 times that. They said it's more like 80,000 people. So the public health records were incredibly off. LA County found the same. New York City found 13.9% had antibodies. I'm sorry, New York State. New York City found 21%. What does that mean? Most people have little to no illness. 99.5% of people get over this with little to no symptomatology. So why would you lock down a country when that is indeed the case, agreed by hundreds of doctors, PhDs around the country?
Okay. Um, where do you want things to go from here? I mean, where do you see any movement, at least in terms of what you're trying to well, yeah. accomplish? Riverside County just, just rescinded their offer. Riverside's a massive county. They said no more masks. I mean, if you look at, I have these articles, it's so great. I have these articles from the U.S. Surgeon General from CDC saying, folks, the mask is actually acts as a nidus of disease. It's, it's got these diseases on it. You're touching your face, you're rubbing. They say, don't do it. Riverside County, don't do it. But people are afraid. They've had so much media of fear that they're doing it. They don't need to. Now, I'm, this, is, I'm, this is not my ideas. These are the articles I pull up from U.S. Surgeon General Jeremy Adams. And I quote, the mask actually increases a person's risk of contracting COVID, echoing remarks made on Saturday that people that called people to stop buying masks, end of quote. I know you mentioned, Dr. Erickson, that you would love to be in contact with the, the White House task force yeah. on this. Have they responded? Have they reached out to you? Have you reached out to the, to the, the task force? I've, I've reached out to Kevin McCarthy and I've reached out to, I, I actually called him yesterday. I haven't heard back. So they have a lot of people they're listening to, but my, my thing is this, we need to, we need, also need to have people from the private sector who don't, aren't getting a government paycheck. I've talked to people all over the country and I think it's critical we talk to people before we try to track, trace and isolate. I don't know if you guys know what HR 6666 is. It's a new, uh, it's a new uh, motion in the house to track, trace, and isolate, mm -hmm. this is unnecessary. And I believe we the people don't want it. So we need to make sure we're listening to people on the ground, physicians specifically, and scientists who are doing the work and not just people who are, are you know, not involved in patient care. One other thing I wanted to ask you, because I know you had mentioned this, and this got a lot of people thinking uh, a few weeks ago, is that you had said, stated that you were, you uh, and some other doctors felt pressured to add COVID-19 on death reports. Is that still happening? And how? How were you pressured? Well, I was, I was on a lecture series with five renowned doctors, uh, Dr. Levitt, who's a uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, scientist, Dr. Jensen, who, as you know, is uh, a um, senator in, in uh, Minnesota. And Dr. Jensen uh, sent, sent paperwork over showing a seven page document stating that if you don't know if someone has COVID and you didn't test them, but you suspect possible, put it on the diagnosis. Kern County, we looked at 13 deaths and we, we looked at about six of them were on hospice. Hospice means much, you're at the end of your life. You know what their diagnosis was? COVID. Does that make sense to you? Well, Dr. Erickson, do us, a, do us a favor. If you hear from the White House task force, if you make any headway, please let us know. We'd like to continue to check in with you uh, to see okay. where this goes. We I'm, I'm always happy. I'll, I'll fly anywhere. I think this is an important time in our country. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan Erickson with Accelerated Urgent Care. Uh, once again, talking about data that he and uh, other doctors have come up with, uh, basically stating that uh, social distancing is overblown and it's time to reopen the government uh, before doing all of these, uh, implementing all of these guidelines. Appreciate your time. Thank you.